This right here is going to be a mix of used PC parts and new parts to make a build that's ultimately going to be some of the best value you are going to find in 2024. And how this magic comes apart is via a Dell OEM system. Now you can pick these up on eBay. There's a few different varieties up for sale. I'll put some links in the description below. Look for things like 16 gigabytes of RAM, Dell Precision or Dell Optiplex. Those are generally your search terms you're going to use to get something really cheap. Or of course, just look locally for Dell computers, desktop PCs like this one right here, which has already been pulled apart. Now we picked this up for 50 Aussie dollars just for the motherboard and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now, we also get a power supply as well, which we are not going to be using, but we do have to add on two components still, and that is a Xeon 1230V3. We got this off AliExpress. These are going really cheap right now. I picked this up for 30 Australian dollars shipped to my door. Now, of course, if you're in the US, prices are gonna be cheaper in USD terms because the dollar is stronger. But what we got right here is some adapters as well. We're gonna need two adapters to make this build function normally. And this is a 24 pin to eight pin adapter since this motherboard uses an eight pin proprietary connector from the power supply. So that converts it to make it work with a normal power supply. And then we've got an adapter right here, the final piece of the puzzle, which is a five uh, well, it's a six pin connector, but only five of the pins work on the top of the motherboard right here. And so what this converter does is it allows you to get a power switch on your case to work properly with this motherboard. Since if you don't have this adapter, you'll then have to get some little pin jumpers and you can do it that way to get the board working. But for how cheap these adapters are, I would recommend going this route. And then of course, outside of this little combo right here, we've also got the cooler included with this whole setup. And then for the SSDs, we have a Samso tie here, one terabyte, just a 2.5 inch. This is a real cheap drive here that I got for an absolute steal. I do get these really cheap and I've never had any issues with them. And in general, I've never had any issues with popular model SSDs that have had a lot of sold items on them with good feedback. So that should be some good buying confidence for you guys if you just wanna get a cheap SSD and people on the internet who generally haven't used the brand before, just say it's garbage, it's gonna break down. I've never had one of these SSDs come back in a PC that I've flipped either. And then we've got a case right here and it's got four RGB fans in it. It's good value for what it is and the airflow actually isn't too bad. So again, just like the SSD, I would buy some of the cases that are really good value doesn't have to be from a named brand as long as it's just got a lot of good feedback and a lot of people have been happy with the value that that case offers, then you should be good to go. Then for the last component of today's build, we have an RTX 2070. I think RTX 2000 series cards right now are extremely undervalued in some cases. We got this for 200 Aussie dollars and for the price performance, it is just going to absolutely tear it up. The new market really can't compete with used price performance. And this card right here is gonna be a perfect example of that. But without further ado, let's get our build underway and then see how this build turns out in terms of performance. And we'll also quickly compare it against this 2070. We'll put it in a higher end system and see how much performance you're losing out on just going with a little i7 4770. Well, it's actually a Xeon. So it's not even the real i7, it's just a budget counterpart that offers better value for money. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon BFTYC. Links in the description below. So we've now finished the build, but we did come into an issue with some error messages when we're booting up the PC. Two of those, and that was the first was the fan. And so to get around this one, we just used the original fan from the case, plug that in, and we've got that actually going on intake for the fan. Then for the front IO, this one was a little bit tricky because I'm used to the Optiplexes. I actually haven't done this with a precision before, but the precision, you have to do an extra step. So first of all, you have to short 
pin seven and eight on the USB connector there, the front panel USB, and you can just use these little uh, bridges, little jumpers to do that. But there's also one more, since it uses a proprietary audio jack for the front panel, we actually ended up figuring out we had to short pins four and five on this connector, and then that got rid of that error message. So I'll put up these diagrams for you guys. If you come into a precision fourth gen, you know how to get around it. So this build is now 100% complete. Well, we've actually got to put the GPU back in. And also when we go to sell this PC, the front audio jacks aren't gonna work, but that's never really a problem because people need to use those audio jacks. They can just use the rear ones instead. But let's get these tests underway and see how this thing performs. So I'm just in the window, I was just ready to start playing games and I'm like, what's going on here? I've only got four threads, four uh, cores enabled. So I've gone into the BIOS on this motherboard and literally hyperthread control is disabled. So we're gonna re-enable that and then get back into the games and actually benchmark. So we've finished up the benchmarking with the 2070 and that Xeon, the 1230V3 budget banger CPU. And then we've tested against the 13900K, same GPU, 2070. And the results are actually really good in favor of that old Xeon. It's surprising how much value for money you can get out of these budget setups for especially games like Fortnite, and also Apex Legends and Cyberpunk as well. Now, Cyberpunk and Apex Legends were pretty straightforward. On max settings on both games, we didn't see a huge difference between these two different setups. But, however, Fortnite was a different story. And this is the difference between creative mode in this game and what's known as Battle Royale mode. And in this modes, creative mode, I mainly test this with GPU bound scenarios because I can quickly get in, do the benchmarks, and it's very replicable, apples to apples. Battle Royale is a little bit different where you're landing in different spots all the time. It can be difficult to do apples to apples benchmarks in Battle Royale, especially if there's updates and things change in the game. Though what we've got right now is a case of the GPU and CPU combo on the 1230 V3 Xeon, working really well in creative. In fact, there wasn't much of a difference between these two setups, but when we went over to Battle Royale, here's where the high settings started to break down on the old 1230V3, AKA the i7-4770. So how we got around this was, it was just on this high settings, it was just stuttering. It was pretty much unplayable. It was a really bad experience. But when we drop it down, to low settings on everything except the textures and the screen resolution. We put the screen resolution up to 100% and then put the textures up to high. We then lock that in, the game looks gorgeous still and this game is just running really smoothly and it's actually a really enjoyable experience. So there wasn't a huge difference if we did these settings on both the setups. Of course, the 13900K setup still gets a marginable increase but it's quite the contrary to the previous settings we had in, where it's a really smooth experience. It's really enjoyable. I can get frags on it. And so this just marks the difference though, between value. If we look at the cost of this whole build, it's coming in under the price of just the CPU alone, the 13900K. We built this whole PC for under 300 USD and it's just performing really well. I'm actually just blown away metaphorically, I mean, I wouldn't want to be blown away with some of the storms coming through the Gold Coast lately, but metaphorically blown away by, by the performance here on this $300 system or 450 Aussie dollars. Then when it comes down to it, we've now broken the code with the Dell Precisions. They're a little bit more complicated than the Optiplexes. Well, not that much more complicated. You just got to add that extra jumper in and your front panel audio doesn't work after that. Also, another downside to the precision is that you also don't get an IO shield too. So do keep that in mind. But what I'm paying for these OEM systems and the value I'm extracting out of them is just second to none. And I feel like the fourth generation OEM systems, we're talking now the Lenovo's, the HP's, the Dell's, 
they all offer extremely good value. Just be careful on which model you're getting in particular. I've done videos on ones that I've transplanted, my favorite go-tos. I'll just chain link some one after the other here, but bottom line is these fourth generation systems, they're quite easy to uh, transplant. They're quite easy to work around the errors and get rid of the error messages. And the best thing is they're dirt cheap. After this, however, when it came to sixth generation, seventh generation, eighth generation, you really had to start doing your homework and make sure you, for instance, Lenovo was just completely out of the picture after fourth generation because they started locking down the boards with power supplies and chips in the power supplies. So if you try to change it into another system, the system just wouldn't power off at all and it would just stay on. So there's some crazy weird things going on out there after you get past fourth gen with these OEM systems. But what we have at the end of the day is a PC for under 300 USD that has an RTX 2070. It's got good power consumption. Actually, I ran the power consumption figures, just stock to stock versus the two setups. And this thing actually does really well, even to this day. And then we've also got after that an i7 equivalent, which for the spec sheet looks great, especially if you wanna do what I'm gonna do with it, and that's flip this PC. Then of course, we've got the RGB bling and Christmas has just passed, but the good thing is you'll, you'll be ready for next Christmas with this PC. Though there's still one more real good thing to talk about with this setup, and that is ultimately it's quiet and the temperatures are really good. I was actually surprised to see both the GPU and CPU constantly under 70 degrees. And you may be wondering why is the CPU actually that low considering the 4770 does run quite hot with these OEM coolers. And the answer to that is it's actually a Xeon. And the Xeons are a little bit more conservative in their values, especially the 1230V3 versus the i7-4770. So this allows it to actually run cooler. And thus, that is just going to mean in the end, you have a system, even though it's used, it's going to run, I feel, for quite a few years to come because it's just got it going on. And the best thing about it all as well, so we got the PC running right here. It's not even loud. Anyhow, guys, I've got a bit off topic here today. Hope you enjoyed this one. Do let us know what you think of this PC right here. I'm actually looking at the cost of it. I'm like, wow, things are getting really good on the used market. They just continually keep getting better. I'm worried that it's going to hit a point where it doesn't get any better. And then prices go up again. But do let us know in the comment section below your thoughts and opinions. Love reading them as always. And I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.